and welcome to Res Life Online. I'm Allison and this is my husband Ross and we are the pastors here at Res Life and we just want to say welcome and we're happy to have you here today. You know, uh, we're in a weird season right now where we don't get to have church physically, uh, but we get to meet with you in your own home here every day. And so, uh, well, I guess it could be every day. So, uh, so anyway, if you're watching today, why don't you take a picture of you and your family or if it's just you, of your dog, or your television or whatever, and post it on social me media with the hashtag uh, ResLifeCouchLife. Uh, we wanna see where you're watching church today and we wanna, we wanna be able to be there with you. So that's a chance for us to do that. Um, also, if it's your first time viewing one of our services, I really wanna encourage you to, uh, to put that in the comments of whatever feed you're watching. Uh, we, we, as a church family, we wanna connect with you and uh, we want to welcome you into our family here at Rest Life. So it doesn't matter if you're watching from, uh, from California or from Chicago, or I, I have some friends who have watched it from Germany. You can be part of our family today, and we would, we would love to connect with you. As well, I wanted to give you an update on where we are as far as when we're going to meet back together here at the church. Uh, right now, we, we're working on those plans, and we're waiting to hear what our governor uh, kind of releases here in this week. So it might have actually happened by now, by this Sunday, but if it hasn't, we'll update you as soon as we know. We're looking at when we feel uh, we would be in a place where it would be advantageous for us to meet here and, and safe and everything else like that. So we just want you to know we are working on it, and so we will be giving you that information really soon. Yeah, we hope that you enjoy the service as you watch. Don't forget to fill up those comments. Um, we have people that want to connect with you that are going to um, be able to pray with you or um, get connected with pastors. We just want to know you to know that we're here. So fill up those comments. We hope you enjoy the service. Well, hey everyone, welcome to Resurrection Life Church Online. We're so glad you guys are here to worship with us. So stand to your feet. Let's clap our hands. I was big. My shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met you.
is so good. God is so good.
pour out our praise to you alone, to you alone. We surrender our hearts to you alone, for you alone. We pour out our praise to you alone, to you surrender our hearts to you alone, to you alone. We pour out our praise, oh, we pour out our praise to you alone, to you alone. We surrender our hearts, we surrender. Sing it out. And I exalt thee. And I exalt thee. And I exalt thee. Sing it again. Come on. God, you deserve praise. Father, we surrender to you like that, like we said in that song. God, we sing our praises to you and to you alone. And we surrender our hearts to you and to you alone. We will not back down from anything else that the world puts in front of us. But we will step forward. We will be strong and courageous, God. Because we know that the only one we surrender to is our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords and our Protector and our Warrior. And we praise you, Father. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey there, Res Life family. I want to thank you all for joining us in worship today. If this is your first time worshiping with us, please let us know in the comments. We'd love to have someone connect with you today. Also, take a moment and let us know where you're watching from. I want to let you know about a new way to connect with the staff here at Res Life. It's called Ask the Pastor. We want to hear from you. So what are your questions and topics that you want answers to? No topic is out of bounds. We'll be collecting those and doing Q&A sessions with our pastors. To let us know what questions you'd like answered, simply email us at askthepastor at rlcbr.org. Ladies, this week is Oasis, and even though we won't be able to meet in person, our women's ministry team will be having a time of worship and connection with God. We'll be streaming this Thursday night at 7 p.m. on both the Oasis Facebook page and our church YouTube channel as well. I also want to remind you that our trip to Israel for February 2021 is still moving forward. 
we'd love to have you join us for this once in a lifetime opportunity. For full details and to sign up, head over to the events page on our website, rlcbr.org forward slash events. We know that today is a special day for all of us because it's Mother's Day. We just wanna take a moment and honor all the moms out there today. Moms teach us so many life lessons and today is your special day. So everyone make sure that you do something nice for your mom and show her how much you care. We want you to know that no matter how long social distancing is in effect, we will continue to be here for you. If you have a need, please reach out to the church over Facebook or email and know that we're all in this together. Hey everybody and welcome to Res Life today and uh, I'm looking forward to getting into the message and what I feel like God's put on my heart. This is going to be the last uh, message in my today series. We've been talking about how the Bible over and over in many places talks about this day. Like this is the day the Lord has made. Today, you know, uh, I will rejoice and be glad, glad in it. Um, choose you this day who you will serve. Like all those different uh, different points in the Bible that talk about today. And so I'm going to talk about today again, today. And so everybody say today. In fact, why don't you go ahead and type it into the comments uh, on whatever you're watching today. Put, uh, put the word today in there. Uh, today is a very special day and uh, for, for, for a lot of people in the world, today is Mother's Day. Uh, so mothers, today is your day. And uh, while you're typing the word today into the comments, why don't you uh, type a little uh, happy Mother's Day to your mom in there or to your, uh, to your wife if you have kids. Uh, send those things out there and, uh, and, and let them know how much they matter to you. So uh, being that it's Mother's Day today, I, I know that today is, for, for a lot of people, is, is a day to celebrate. Uh, maybe it's because you are a mother or uh, because you had a great mom and you want to celebrate her today. Or maybe that it's because you're going to become a mom soon. Lord knows we're probably going to have a whole lot of babies after this stay-at-home order. Yeah, I said that and uh, you're not here, so you can't stop me. Anyway, uh, or maybe today is a tough day. If you're a mom, because uh, you're also a school teacher and uh, you're maybe suddenly questioning your choices about how many children you had. Uh, anyway, uh, so today is Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day. We love you all. We wish we could be together today. Just imagine that we gave you a rose or a, a carnation or whatever as you were walking in and out of uh, the, the facility uh, and fathers, let's, let's be pulling together and hope for Father's Day to be together in church. But we're just going to have to wait and see. Um, on the topic of Mother's Day, I know that today can be a tough day for a lot of ladies. Uh, those who struggled with pregnancy or infertility or maybe you lost a child. And today is kind of a reminder of those things. And so just so you know, we as a church, we're praying for you. We're lifting you up. And I know, I know that that it's interesting that each day can have a different effect on our lives. Uh, for, for people, depending on what day of the year it is, what holiday is being celebrated, or what, um, what past thing, what thing that has happened in history is being celebrated, it can bring up different emotions. Um, I always find it interesting that, uh, that Facebook brings up your memories posts, and I always kind of look forward to that in the morning, you know, first time you open up your, your social media to see what's going on in the world, because we can't... Uh, go out in the world very well, uh, it pops up and says, on this day. And uh, this last week, I had a whole bunch of them pop up that were uh, memories of the marriage retreat. And so, so bummed that we didn't get to have the marriage retreat, but, uh, but we'll, we'll be excited about doing it next year. I don't know what's in the work, works uh, as far as the rest of this year, but, but definitely for next year. We're so sad we missed it. But it seems like every day right now, things are changing. We're actively waiting for the governor to give us an update on, on what she's going to release and what's going to happen, what's going to do. We're wondering when we can get back to normal life. Every day, everything's changing. And it seems like when things change each day, we have to learn how to react to those things. We have to learn you know, how we're going to live with the new announcement of how life should look like. And, uh, and in, a, in a system or in a life where everything's changing every single day, we should be taking comfort in the fact that God never changes. That even though our world changes, even though our lives change, God never changes. 
you know? In a world where everything changes, Jesus never changes. We should take comfort in that. I think uh, most people have heard that verse before. It's in Hebrews 13.8. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's a well-used scripture that can be, honestly, really confusing for some people. Uh, Let me explain that. Why is it confusing? Well, uh, I think it's confusing because Jesus physically is not the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, Jesus, uh, Jesus walked the earth in human form, and now he's not in human form, so he's not the same. Jesus was once a baby in golden fleece diapers, and now he's not a baby anymore. Um, so, so we know, um, we know that Jesus was around during the creation of the earth with God. It says that, uh, that God was hovering above the water. It says the word was with God. And, and that when it says the word, it's a capital W. And, uh, and that's referring, if you theologically are studying, that's referring to Jesus. Okay, so, but, he, but that was before he was human form. And then he's now human form, or he was, and now he's not again. So, so what does this mean, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. For somebody who's not a Christ follower, that's confusing. But for somebody who is a Christ follower, it, it's, a whole, it, it's a whole different ballgame. When you look at the context of what's being said in this passage in Hebrews, you can find out that it's not talking about Jesus physically being the same yesterday and today and forever. It, it's talking about something completely different. So let's give it some context. Let's read the verse that comes before that statement. Hebrews 13, uh, 7 says this, 7 through 8 says, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. So it becomes more obvious when we when we read it with that verse before it, that the statement isn't talking about Jesus physically. It's talking about the results of following Jesus. Now, if you read further or, or further before this scripture in Hebrews, you read this, two chapters before, you read this long list of the forefathers of our faith and the, the way that they had faith in God and how God came through. And then it goes to the next generation of, of leaders who followed God and how God came through. And the next and the next and the next. And it, 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 I believe that list even includes, uh, it includes Moses. Uh, I believe it includes Joseph and Abraham and a whole bunch of different people in there. But, uh, but really, um, this scripture is saying, look at how trusting God has produced results in your life. You know, the Bible in large part, um, and Jesus' teachings in large part, are packed full of promises. They're packed full of uh, what I like to call if-then statements, statements where uh, if, you, if you do this, then you will experience this. You know, if you honor your father and mother, you'll live long in the land the Lord has, has given you. And so, like, there's a lot of these if-then type of things. Do you remember in school, you learned uh, another way of saying that it was cause an effect, right? So Jesus made these statements and said, if you do this, and here's the cause, that it, the effect or the result will be X, Y, Z. It'll be this. And so, so Jesus made these statements that were linked to promises, these cause and effects, and the writer of Hebrews is explaining this to these Jews. Now remember, Hebrews, the book, is written to the Jewish people who were learning about Jesus being the Messiah, being the Savior. Uh, they, the Jews still today don't believe that Jesus was the Messiah, but there were a whole bunch of them who saw people like Peter and Paul and all of the disciples and all the people who were Jews and then, then started to follow Jesus and, then, and, and all of that and teaching that Jesus was the Messiah. There's a lot of Jews who are going, okay, I want to know more about this. So that's where the, the book of Hebrews was, writ- was written. It was a letter written to the Jewish people telling them about Jesus being the Messiah. And, and so what it did is it really pointed to look at all the people who follow Jesus and look at the results. Look at how the, the promises were fulfilled in their lives. And now if you have faith like them, you should imitate them, you know. And, and they're looking at the testimony of people's lives. That's why we at church, when we're here physically, we show you testimony videos all the time. Because testimonies are people saying, look at the results, look at how God fulfills his promises in our lives. You know, uh, they're a testament to the fact that God's if-then statements really happen. Uh, on, a, on a side note, well, or on a note, is, is this, do you remember when you could take your kids to Walmart? 
Me neither. <laughs> you remember, you could, you, when, when you would go to Walmart, and uh, I, I, this is what I would do. Well, another side note is uh, my wife despises taking our kids to the store. Uh, she feels stressed, overwhelmed. The kids take things off of the shelves and all of that. Uh, I enjoy taking my kids to the store. I just tell them to take everything off the, the shelves. We go to the bike aisle. We get every bike down. We test them all out up and down the aisles. Uh, we go to the furniture section. Uh, Meyer kind of used to have this little furniture bean bag area. The kids jump on everything. We bang on the fish tanks together. It's great. So, uh, so anyway, when we go, though, <laughs> people look at us and go, they, they say to their kids, don't do what those kids are doing, right? <laughs> no, but when you're there, you, and when I'm there with my kids, if I see another kid really acting up, I take this opportunity to go, look at what's happening over there. Let's not, you guys should not act that way. You, you would be really sure to point out a, a kid that's being, uh, doing something negative at the store to tell your kids that's not the way we act. And in the same way, we should be looking at kids, you know, in parenting, we should be looking at kids who are doing really great things. And we should say to our kids, look at how great they're being and look at the results of what's happening in their lives because they're being so good. You know, this is what the writer of Hebrews was doing for the Jews. He was pointing out those people that have had faith in Jesus and how even when circumstances weren't good, throughout all of the trials and the things in their lives, they were able to experience these really positive results because they had such great faith. Everybody type in, in, into your comments, great faith. You know, because we're human, we need to see results in order for, for us to build up our faith. I think it's one of the great downfalls of humanity is that we, we, don't, we can't just blindly have faith. We, we, we are like, I, I can't believe it till I see it kind of people. And a lot of people think that's super shallow or whatever, but it's part of the reality of being a human is that we want to see results. You know? And I like that line in there that says, imitate their faith. You know, imitation is something that we do when we see somebody who's got results that we want, right? Um, when, we see, when we see somebody uh, having success at something, it would only make sense because we see it for us to believe it and to want to do it. Um, again, kids are a great example of this. I have a video I, I want to just show you real quick of my son. Maybe you saw it on Facebook already because my wife and I posted it. But, uh, but this is Owen catching a fish. No, oh, you lost your bait right there. Does this for people? Um, let me see it. Nah. No. No. Back, dude. You got one, Luke. You got one. I, I love that video. It's, it's hilarious. He goes, well, that's a good fish. Like the way he said it is so country. It's so good. And he just cracks us up when he, when he does this stuff. But that kid loves to fish. Well, I love to fish. And so we were out fishing. On, and, and I had said that line probably 30 times that day because the kids would hook one and I go, that's a good fish, get it in the boat. And so he's hearing this and he's seeing success with catching fish and so naturally he's like, that's a good fish when he gets it. So, so we imitate people who we want to be like or, or who are getting the results that we want to have in our lives. So you remember Jesus that Jesus was having and, and Jesus explains to them that they can do it that, that they've seen Jesus' results and that they can do the same thing, that it's possible. In John 14, 12, Jesus, is, as like a farewell, even says, like, you're going to go do it. You can do this. In John 14, 12, it says, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works. Everybody say, I will do the works. Anyone who believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater 
things than these because I'm going to the Father. So what do the disciples do after Jesus leaves? They know they can do it. They've seen it done. They're going to go and imitate the faith that Jesus had. And they go and, and they go out and they start ministering to people. And we see and we read about incredible miracles that happen. Incredible ministry that happens. The New Testament letters that we read, all the different letters, you know, like Ephesians and, and Corinthians and all these different letters that are written, those are all teachings from those people, just like Jesus' teachings that speak to the heart of who we are and give us direction and help us to love the Lord greater. They did exactly, they did exactly what Jesus said that they would do. And they saw this fulfillment happen. So what am I getting at today? Where am I going with this? Uh, this is what I'm getting at. I'm saying that the promises of God never change. The promises of God never change. Even though our circumstances change, if, if we have faith in Jesus, we know that he will produce results in our lives. Last week, I talked about Joseph, and I pointed out that he had multiple major negative circumstances have happen in his life over and over. And it seemed like they kept changing. And as soon as he start figuring out the new normal, the, what it's going to be like to be a, a servant in Potiphar's house, things would change. When he figured out what it was going to be like to be in, in jail, and, and he had a life figured out in jail, it would all change again. Then he become, you know, it's like every step of the way, things kept changing. Yet through it all, he continued to have faith in God, continued to follow, follow God's instruction, leading, and the way you're supposed to live for God. And, and God's plan prevails. So in your life today, can you trust God like Joseph did? Or maybe let's take it to the New Testament, because when we're talking about the Old Testament, we're talking about God the Father. So bring it to the New Testament, and let's look at the Apostle Paul. Can you trust God the way that Paul trusted God? You know, when he was chained in, prison, in a prison sewer, he still spent his time praising God. Paul writes that, that all things are possible through Christ who strengthens me while he's in captivity, while he's struggling. So i got to ask you, in your life today, do you believe that God can? Do you believe that God has the ability to turn your life around? Do you have the, the faith to believe that God can change your life, can change your marriage, can change your relationships, can change your, your life and your family with your kids, can change your finances, can, can heal your financial situation, can get you that job that you need? Do you believe that God can? I think you do. But you just need to remember one of the greatest ways for you to have the faith to believe that God can is to remember the people in your past who trusted God when God came through. You know, maybe you've got that great grandmother, grandfather who loved the Lord and experienced something that you haven't yet experienced in your life, but you know they did. You saw it. You experienced it alongside them. That's the kind of thing that helps your faith to grow. That's the kind of thing that helps you to say, I believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That, that Hebrew scripture, it says, remember those who follow Christ, the, the, the people that you trust, the, the leaders in your life, and imitate their faith. And then it says, because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In other words, if God would do it for them, God can do it for you. Do you believe that God can in your situation right now, today? So to wrap up today, I want to look at, at one more thing. You know, the book of Hebrews takes a lot of what the Jewish rituals were or are and explains how Jesus for, fulfills them. The main example, if you read Hebrews, which is, is a tough book to read. Uh, because we're not, unless you're Jewish and understand Jewish heritage and Jewish faith, it, it can be confusing. One of the most important aspects of ancient Jewish faith it was the high priest who would go into the Holy of Holies and he would uh, perform the sacrifices and he would do the things in order to make you clean or to get you forgiveness. And uh, 
And if you read in Hebrews, I, I believe it's chapter 4 uh, and, and into chapter 5, it talks about how Jesus is the new high priest. About how forever, for all of history, before Jesus died on the cross, defeated the grave and rose again, that there had to be a high priest in the temple who would go in and he'd perform these rituals, he'd do these sacrifices so that you would be made clean, so that you would be righteous for another year, so that your sins would be covered. And it's explaining that what Jesus did when his blood was shed is that he, he became the high priest. He's the one who went to the Father for us for forgiveness. And that when he did that, he did it once and for all. That, that Jesus' sacrifice and Jesus' payment for our sins was permanent. You know, the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, if we will choose to follow him, his promise of eternity in the family of God is final. His promise of right standing with God is final. His promise of forgiveness for your sins is final. Jesus had the final. This is, this is what this means. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It means that he has the final word. And if you will have faith like those that went before you, those who saw results, that you will see the same results. There's, there's a scripture in the, in the word that says, ask anything in my name. Ask anything in my name and I will do it. The name of Jesus is the final word. Jesus is, is in so, someday is going to come back and he's going to be the final word on this world, on this earth, on everything that's going on. Jesus had the final word. So what should our lives look like? If we really trust him, if we really love him, if we really are trying to imitate the faith of our forefathers or our foremothers in, in so many of our lives, those that love the Lord and, and experience great faith, and, and what, what should our lives look like as a result of this? Well, it explains it in Hebrews right after this statement about Jesus. Hebrews 13, 15 says, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of what? Praise. Write praise in your comments right now. We need to give God a sacrifice of praise. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will praise. I will continually wake up every morning, no matter what my circumstances look like around me, just like Joseph, just like Paul, just like Peter. No matter what's going on in my life, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to continually bring a sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, right? I'm going to bring a sacrifice of praise to the Lord every single day. It says, again, in Hebrews 13, 15, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. The fruit of your life should praise the Lord. That's what it should look like. And then it says in, in verse 16, the next verse, it says, And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. It's interesting that it says sacrifice. Because a sacrifice is something where you give something up. Sacrifices aren't supposed to be easy. You know, some days when you wake up, it's going to be a sacrifice to say, God, thank you for this day, because things are tough. Because it's not easy. For you moms who are struggling with homeschooling, it might be a sacrifice of praise to say, thank you God for these kids that I have today. Because it's tough. And you look at the circumstances of your day and it's exhausting. For those of you who are struggling with illness or, or worry about illness with COVID or with anything else, with cancer, with things like that, it can, get, it can be hard to get up and go, Thank you, God, for this day because maybe you're in pain or maybe you're in fear or maybe you're struggling. And, and you know, we all know fear is not from the Lord. I agree with that 100%. But it doesn't mean people aren't in fear. You need to make the sacrifice to say, I praise you, God. I praise you, God. 
And for some of us, it's scary to do good or to tell people about our faith or things like that. That is listed here as a sacrifice. Going out of your way to let people know how good Jesus is, sometimes because it's scary, because we're humans, is a sacrifice. But it's one that God says should be a factor, should be an indicator of our life with God. In this time of craziness in our world, what people need more than ever is is for Christ's followers to let people know that Jesus doesn't change. That his forgiveness and his love and his goodness, his faithfulness, that it doesn't change. No matter what changes around us. People need you to say that. People need to hear that come from your mouth. You know what? If they do hear that from you and they do see God in you, Someday down the road, they're going to hear a pastor use this scripture from Hebrews where it says, imitate those that you know who've loved the Lord and seen results, and they're going to imitate you. This is your chance. Today is your day. It's your chance to show people how good God is and about how Jesus never changes no matter what changes around us. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you that you are consistent. God, that you are steady, that you fulfill promises, that your word never fails. God, I thank you that in the midst of our crazy lives right now, that you are totally in control, that you're not surprised by this, that you're not afraid of what's going to happen next, God, that you're, that you're not up in heaven wondering how the church is going to make it. Instead, God, you are rejoicing because your word is getting out to people like it never has before. And God, today we choose to trust you. We choose to, to make the decision to, to imitate the faith of the people that we've seen as we grew up, as we, as we learned about you, the people who we saw having results in their lives because of you. We choose to live the way that they lived with the faith that they lived. And God, I pray that for some today who've been trying to figure out this whole faith thing, that there's been more understanding, more truth, and more growth today, understanding who Jesus is and how he paid the price for us. God, we thank you that Jesus committed himself to the cross, to the grave, and to defeating the grave for each one of us. In fact, if if you are watching today and you want, to, you want to become part of the family of God. You want to become part of those promises. You can make a choice for Jesus today. Right where you're at, in your living room or in your car, or in your bedroom. You could say yes to Jesus today. You can make him Lord of your life. And you, be, you can begin living out the life that he has for you. So if that's you and you want to make that decision, just right now where you're at. In your heart, in your spirit, say, I want to make that decision. It's simple. We're going to pray a prayer. The Bible is really clear. It says that we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. And we believe in our heart that he really is God, that he rose from the dead, defeated the grave, that we'll be saved. Okay, so we're going to say a prayer and you're going to confess with your mouth. But it's more than that. It's a heart thing. It's waking up every day and saying, okay, God, I'm going to praise you and I'm going to go where you want me to go and I'm going to do what you want me to do. And I'm gonna sit and or I'm gonna sit or walk or live or whatever, expectantly looking forward to what you're gonna do in my life. So we're gonna pray, and if that's you and you've decided to make that decision today, pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord, thank you for loving me. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for forgiveness. Today I choose to make Jesus Lord of my life. I choose to live for you from this day on. I don't want to live my way anymore. I want to live your way as part of your family. Lead me into the life you created for me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Well, if you made that decision today, I want you to know that the word says that all of heaven is rejoicing. And if you were here in this place with all of us today, you would have hear, heard the entire church cheering and excited about the fact that you've made that decision today. So if you did, if you would go into your comment section of whatever you're watching and type in there, I, I gave my life to the Lord today, or I got saved today, or I made this decision today. We as a church family, we want to celebrate with you. We want to be praying with you. And we also want to connect with you and help you take the next steps of your relationship with God. One of the pastors will connect with you and help you get the ball rolling on what tomorrow looks like as you wake up as part of the family of God. And so we're excited about that. And I want to just say this, you know, in this weird time that we're in, church is not a building that you walk into. It's a family that you belong to. And you belong to our family. We love you guys. If we don't see you sooner, we'll see you next week. We hope today's message in this whole series has been a blessing to you during this season. I just wanted to take a couple minutes to give you an update on how we've been able to use your tithes and offerings as you've been faithful during this season with us. Our missionary partners all over the world, from India to Israel, from Alaska to Latin America, and everywhere that world mission goes, we've been able to continue to support them and equip them to do God's work all over the world. And then here in our local community, just two weeks ago, we were able to give 500 Bibles to an organization that we love, Angels of Action. They've been able to pass those out to kids in our community. And then this last week, we were able to support three local school districts. We were able to completely erase their lunch fund deficits to give families one less thing to have to worry about during this time. Just a reminder, there's three ways you can give. You can give online, it's quick and easy. You can have your bank set up to send your giving automatically to the church, or you can mail your giving directly to the church if you prefer to do it that way. And the last thing I wanted to mention is this past Tuesday, thank you to everyone who was able to be a part of our blood drive. It was a huge success at a time when blood is really in need. So thank you so much for being a part of our church family. Together, we're continuing to be the church and to glorify God. When I get up in the morning and I'm studying the word or when I have something that I want to look into, I want to I walk you through the process of, of, of how, I, how I come up with these messages, how God lays these things on my heart, and how I get into the word in, in these cases. And so here it is. Step one is this, is God puts a thought on my mind.